that might be? Not me. Um, no, no. I'll tell you in a minute. We're getting okay. started. All right. We'll call to order the um, October 5th, 2020, Jamestown Rotary Club meeting. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of the United States of America and to the Republic of the United States of America and to the Republic of the United States of America and to the Republic of the United States Lord of the Universe, we are thankful for this beautiful fall day that you have given us for its blessings, its opportunities, its challenges. May we appreciate and use each day that comes to us. We pray for strength and guidance for each day as it comes, for each day's duties, for each day's problems. May we be challenged to give our best always, and may we be assured of your presence with us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sharon. Well, we've lost a visiting Rotarians and guests. Uh, please welcome District Governor Frank Adamson. Uh, Woo -hoo! Frank. Woo -hoo! Thanks for coming today. Thanks, Joni. Jason thanks for having Strong. me. I'm sorry, what was that, Frank? I'm just saying thanks for having me. You're welcome. Uh, Jason Strong is a past member. He's come to the meeting today. Woohoo! Hi, Jason. <laughs> we have our new member candidates, Paulette Klein and Melissa Myers are with us, and our speaker, PJ Wendell, is with us. So we're very excited to see everybody. And the sponsors for Paulette and Melissa are here, too. So we're, we're going to have a great meeting. Before we get uh, rolling, let's repeat the four-way test. You can all unmute yourself and say it with me. Of the things we think, say or do, number one. Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Number two, is it fair to all concerned? Is it fair, is it fair to all, all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? And it will be beneficial to all concerned. Thank you. Well, um, Past member Jason Strong has a gift for our club, and Ooh. he'd like to present that right now. So I ask you all to mute yourselves. Well, thank you for having me. I uh, have a gift. It's not uh, extremely significant, uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to read a, a paragraph that was written by Henry Hall, and this will give you a clue uh, as to what the gift is. Uh, for some of you, you likely uh, will make this connection uh, early on, uh, and by the second sentence or so, uh, you'll all have it. Uh, when the Jamestown Rotary Club, first of the service clubs, was established in Jamestown in 1919, and its active and enthusiastic members sought to justify its community service purpose. Two main projects were almost immediately undertaken, and I might add, successfully carried through. The organization of a community chest to combine the solicitation of funds and control of expenditures of our community charity and welfare, welfare organizations, and to provide a golf course for the recreation of local people, who up to that time had no opportunity to play golf, except as they went to Warren or tried the inadequate facilities provided at Bemis Point and for a time at Lakewood. Erwin D. Shearman was named chairman of a Rotary Club committee without which no action might have been taken for years. With the help particularly of such men as Frank O. Anderson, Fletcher Goodwill, Earl Mor Morrison, Frankie Sherman Jr., George F. Hurlbert, Bill Lossiter, Harry Briggs, Don Allen Curtis, Dr. Henry A. Eastman, Norman N. Pinkham, and the Halls, with many others, an organization was affected based on stock holdings in an underlying realty company of a minimum of $200 each 
and running to as much as $5,000 a piece, which selected the property after considerable discussion of sites and hired professional help in laying out a course. So uh, if you may have gathered there, uh, I'm here on behalf of Moonbrook Country Club today, uh, as you all celebrated uh, the 100 year anniversary of Rotary uh, in Jamestown last year, Moonbrook Country Club is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Uh, and without uh, the Rotary Club of Jamestown, Moonbrook Country Club likely wouldn't exist or it wouldn't have uh, been celebrating its 100 year anniversary this year. Uh, we had hoped uh, to do this with a little bit more fanfare throughout the year, but it wasn't possible. Uh, if any of you have had the opportunity to, uh, to be at Moonbrook this year, you may have noticed the new flags on the golf course celebrating our 100th anniversary. Uh, we had a, a few logos designed uh, to celebrate that 100 year anniversary. And uh, I wanted to deliver at uh, the Rotary Golf Outing this year, but uh, was unable to. Uh, the Rotary Club's very own uh, flag for your uh, office, for your club, for wherever you choose to put it, uh, to make sure uh, that we that we recognize without uh, without you and without this club, uh, we wouldn't uh, we we wouldn't be able to celebrate that hundred years uh, in 2020. So thank you. Uh, I, uh, I appreciate you giving me a few minutes here today, and I'll make sure that that gets uh, safely into the hands of, uh, of Joni. Thank you very much. We will um, show that in June when we come back and do our um, golf uh, tournament. We're, we're scheduled for the first week of June of next year, so we'll definitely have it on exhibit there. Thank you so much, Jason, for thinking of us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, moving on. Let's welcome District Governor Frank Adamson, who will do us the honor of inducting our two new members. Myself, so I'm muted here. Thank you, uh, Joni. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be visiting your club uh, for the second time, um, again virtually, but uh, we do what we do. And uh, it's always an honor um, for me as, the, as your district governor to be able to induct new members of a, of a club. As you know, the challenge I th I've thrown out to all the clubs in the district is to uh, add four net new members uh, this year. And uh, you folks are, are well on your way, so I very much appreciate that. So it's uh, my privilege and pleasure to uh, welcome into the membership of your club uh, Paulette Klein and Melissa Myers, whose names were proposed by um, Eddie Sandquist, Sandquist and Vince Horgan. And I'm going to ask um, Eddie and Vince now to just talk a little bit about these members uh, before I do the induction. Great. Frank, who do you want us to go first? Uh, is Vince on the call? Yep, I'm on the call, Mayor. Why don't you head it off? Sure thing, happy to do so. Um, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me. I am pleased today uh, to introduce uh, Paulette Klein as a new member uh, for the Rotary Club. Uh, although I'm a new member myself, I'm very excited to help uh, bring other new members uh, into the club uh, and into our organization. Um, but Paulette is not a stranger to the uh, Rotary. Uh, Paulette and I got a chance to speak very early on uh, around the time of the uh, pandemic and um, gosh, am I impressed with uh, the work that she has done. Um, just professionally, uh, she's, been the, uh, she's been a director of nursing in Ohio, the public health director of Niagara County, and one of the health commissioners uh, in the state of Ohio. And I think Paulette, you're now retired. Uh, God bless you if you are, because I wouldn't want to be dealing with everything going on in Ohio right now as a health commissioner. Uh, but uh, she's got a wonderful uh, background uh, degree in nursing and psychology and, and public health. Um, she's been part of the Rotary International uh, Travel uh, and she's actually received an award uh, as part of it. Um, she's been part of the Rotary Club of Barberton, Ohio. Um, and I'll note that she may have had a small stint with the uh, Kiwanis of Barberton, but we won't hold her hold that against her. 
Um, we always love folks that can serve uh, and support uh, the community. Um, I'll tell you that I uh, learned so much from Paulette uh, when uh, I met with her and got a chance to speak with her about some of her past work uh, and the work she's done. And uh, she, she chooses to make uh, part of her life here down in Chautauqua County uh, while she's doing a whole bunch of other things in some, uh, some great places across the U.S. Um, but I am pleased and honored uh, to help move and sponsor uh, Paulette Klein for the Rotary Club uh, here in Jamestown. And uh, my name is Vince Horgan, and I'm pleased to sponsor uh, Melissa uh, Myers, who first joined Rotary in Elkins, West Virginia in the mid-90s, uh, where she owned a local McDonald's franchise. Uh, that club averaged about 100 members, which was terrific for a small town. Melissa is a Paul Harris fellow and really loves the programs Rotary does both locally and internationally. She is a board member of the Randolph Country uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, a group tasked with tourism in the county. Uh, she was a member of Rotary until she moved from West Virginia to New York uh, after they sold their, their three stores in West Virginia and four in Western New York and one in Pennsylvania. Melissa's father-in-law uh, owned uh, many Western New York McDonald's and after a disabling stroke, it was difficult for her mother-in-law to run the businesses. So Melissa and Dave bought the Eastern portion of the Myers family restaurants, McDonald's restaurants, and uh, added a Pennsylvania store for a different operator for a total of five stores. They had two young children with all their family in New York. It was always better to be closer to extended family so the kids could get to know their cousins. Additionally, the New York school system is much better than the West Virginia system. Melissa knows this because she had firsthand knowledge. She graduated from Chautauqua Central School, then JCC and Buff State College with a degree in art. She's also has a degree from Hamburger University in Chicago. Yes, there really is such a place. She rejoined the Olean Rotary Club not too long after moving here and was a member for 10 to 11 years. While there, she was the Olean Rotary Club uh, pre uh, president, member of the board of directors from 2008, 2009, she was the club president. While the restaurants were doing well, Melissa and her husband decided to get out of the business for various reasons. They sold the restaurants and she opened up an art supply and picture framing store in Olean. Um, the demands of that business, unfortunately, had her leave uh, Rotary for a temporary time, just didn't have the time. Uh, the new business, she ran quickly out of our, our room. Uh, they were doing classes, had art gallery, which you can tell by the background that Melissa has behind her. Um, she found a new location for this business in Allegheny. While she was involved with the Rotary, she wasn't involved with the Rotary Club anymore. She felt the need to pursue some civic duties. She ran for and was elected to the Village of Allegheny trustee position and served on the board for four years. During that time, she was instrumental in getting the village's canoe launch up and running on the Allegheny River. It was a really popular destination. She also headed up the solar committee for the town of El, um, Allegheny. She decided to work her way into retirement after many years of working long hours. An opportunity came up to teach art to the students of Archbishop Walsh Southern Tier Catholic School. So she taught kids from Montessori through 12th grade in visual art. The school has an international baccalaureate degree program, which was unique to that area. She took some time and courses to become a certified visual art for that degree, which was an intense program. She retired from teaching job at the end of January, 2020, just before the pandemic hit. This enabled her to get her brand new refurbished house, which is a really magnificent and happens to live be across the street from me. Um, she put her old house on the market and uh, moved to the current uh, beautiful house in Bemis Point. Closer to the family, time um, now is uh, enjoyed with gardening, reading, water skiing, biking, and cross country. 
She wants to get to know Eric, more people right here in our local community. And we are thrilled to have her join our Jamestown Rotary Club. We welcome you, Melissa, and your husband, Dave, uh, to our community and to Rotary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daddy. Thank you, Vince. Uh, wow, you got two wonderful, wonderful new members. And uh, Paulette, just so you know, um, for three years, I was a member of the um, Kiwanis Club of Cambridge, Canada. And um, I did come back to, <laughs> to Rotary. So maybe you can be a, a district governor one day <laughs> with your background. So uh, it's wonderful to be here again, as I said, and uh, my pleasure to, uh, to welcome uh, both Paulette Klein and Melissa Myers, uh, whose uh, names again were proposed by, uh, by Eddie and Vince. Uh, the proposal has been reviewed in accordance with your club's bylaws. Uh, Paulette and Melissa, uh, I now proceed to admit you into membership in the Rotary Club of Jamestown and to the friendship of Rotary throughout the world. Um, you have learned that the idea of Rotary is service, and our principal motto is, as you know, service above self. The object of your club and all Rotary clubs is to encourage and foster this ideal, and we know that you will share in this effort. You have been approved for membership uh, by this club because they believe you to be a worthy representative of your vocation, uh, interested in the ideals of Rotary, and willing to do your share in translating these ideals into action. You have agreed to accept the obligations of membership in your club and to obey their constitution and bylaws. You have also learned about the specific committees and opportunities to engage with Rotary. The club is eager for you to put your gifts and talents to work alongside your fellow Rotarians. Paulette and Melissa, you will receive your new rotary pin and we ask you to wear it with pride. So welcome to the Rotary Club of Jamestown. Thank you. Thank you very much, District Governor Frank. That was wonderful. And welcome to the club, Paulette. And Melissa, would you like to say anything, Paulette? Certainly. Um, I just wanted to clarify one thing. I've never been a Kiwanian. I don't know quite oh. how that information was shared. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that I spoke in many Kiwanis club meetings as a public health <laughs> advisor. So maybe, maybe that's how that information came through. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, and I'm proud to be a Paul Harris fellow and also a public health uh, ambassador for a Rotary International uh, serving in Africa and it, yeah. in two different countries. So thank you so much. I'm so proud to be back in the fold and with all of you in Jamestown, looking forward to do whatever I can to help in your wonderful effort. Thank you. Thank you, Paulette. Melissa, would you like to say anything? Um, well, Vince did a terrific job of introducing me. I'm not sure um, what else I could say. Uh, so thank you very much, Vince, for that. And I'm very happy to be a part of the club. Thank you. Wonderful. So nice to have new members and lots of old members, too. All right. So let's move on to announcements. Our um, Rotary Yours recorder today is Sue Jones. Hopefully she'll get more than half the words because she's only working with one hand. We extend our condolences to Diana and Lou Meckley at the passing of her mother over this weekend, past weekend. It was also brought to my attention that the, the AM club, um, Bill Briggs passed away. He was a charter member of that club. Our thoughts and prayers are with all the families and friends. Are there any committee chair announcements? Oh, Vince has an announcement. I bet he does. Well, um, fellow Rotarians <clears throat> and district governor, uh, I want to make a report of the Highway Cleanup Committee. Uh, on or about Saturday, October, uh, October 3rd, 0830 hours, 17 Rotarians and spouses 
deployed from the Route 60 park and ride to clean up trash on the side of Highway I-86 between Jamestown and Faulkner. Both east and westbound areas were canvassed. Various items were identified as trash and bagged up. In New York State, DOT supplied orange trash bags. Fifteen bags were filled and placed on the side of the highway for collection by follow-on forces, namely New York State DOT. Of note was the identification of an old dead skunk, which was only photographed and left alone in its final resting place. It appears the beer of choice for I-86 travelers was Bud Light, although there was some dissenting opinions from others, Marissa. Conditions were very favorable with no rain, calm winds, and cool air. Morale remained high throughout. Highlighting the operation was a change of command ceremony where Mag Magnuson took over leadership of the Rotary Club of Jamestown Highway Cleanup Committee by accepting the vests, the trash bags, and extension grabbers. Outgoing Chair Vince Horrigan thanked all who have stepped up, buckled up, to pick up trash and bag it over the last two years. New Chairman Mag Magnuson thank Vince, but promised a kinder, gentler approach to highway cleanup. That is my report. <laughs> Out. <laughs> thank you, Vince. Uh, Lee, do you want to say anything? Uh, Vince, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate the compliment of kinder and gentler, but I hope to be as efficient in leadership as you have been in the past. So thank you. Hey, we had a great turnout. We had 17 Rotarians, Lynn Grohl, John Healy, Pat Kenny, Dick Johnson, Melissa Myers, new, Meg Magnuson, Sherry and uh, Jim Crow, Paulette Klein, new, <laughs> Joni Blackman, president, Dave and Marissa Troxell, Jim Gamina, Mary Schiller, uh, Dave Painter, and Kirk Young. So it was an awesome turnout. Thank you. Yes, it was a great day. Thank you very much, Vince. Any other committee chairs would like to add anything? Well, one thing from the foundation and also uh, Polio, uh, Jake Schrantz is our, our bike rider for this club. And uh, looking on uh, the site that our president sent us and she has sent that to everybody. Uh, the last time I looked, he was up to $850 for his $1,500 goal. Uh, so if you have not contributed a little bit to that, you might consider finding that old email, clicking on it and uh, giving some money towards polio because we are very close. I might add that in our district, the goal is $200,000, which when Bill Gates and his foundation gets through with it, with his wife, will be $600,000. So your contribution is a big deal. So uh, think about that. Thanks. Joni. Thank you. Yeah. Joni. Yeah. The uh, Literacy Committee has uh, another meeting this Thursday at noon via Zoom. And we have our two libraries almost totally set up at two uh, RoboWash laundromats. Um, team members are taking turns to uh, monitor the, the libraries there every month until June. So it seems to be going well. David Troxell made a wonderful bookshelf for Marion Street. And uh, so the committee's working well, we're getting it done. And we'll continue with our Zoom meetings. Fantastic. Great activities going on. Any other chairs like to add anything? All right, not hearing anything. Uh, yes, the Pedal for Polio fundraiser is doing well at 850. We have until the 28th of the month to finish up and reach our goal of 1500 or more. I put the link into the chat. You directly click onto that, you can go right to it. And I failed to mention that Randy Sweeney gave me Jake Trance's name a long time ago, you know, a month ago, to ask about writing for us. So I really wanted to thank Randy for that because it came together so wonderfully. There will be no meeting next week. We're all supposed to celebrate Columbus Day or whatever the new name is. 
<laughs> there will be a board meeting, however. <laughs> there will be a new board uh, a more board meeting on Friday the 16th at 9 on Zoom, and I'll send a link to that. And I ask you to remember the club to support us financially during this difficult time by sending in your meeting donations. And even if it's just $5 for every meeting you come to, that would be great. And you can do that on the jamestownnewyorkrotary.org website. There's a donation button right there. If it's not just for that, it's something else, please send an email to Russ Webb, our treasurer, and let him know exactly what the money's for so he can allocate it in the right line. Are there any other announcements for the benefit of the club? Yes, Sherry. I have one I'd like. Could you um, let me share my screen for a quick minute? Oh, sure. Can you make me host? Please, sorry, that was rude. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need to host, hold on, that's a different thing. Let me find Give it me. right back as soon as I'm done. Oh, you can have it. I just gotta find <laughs> no. it. No, <laughs> I don't want it. Oh, I want to share a picture. Oh, I forgot to share a picture of the highway cleanup. I, I will do that when I get my screen back. Where the heck are you? There you are. Make host, all right. Okay, it's got to travel from Pennsylvania. There you are. I got it. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. I wanted to announce that I got an email that for all of you that shows that we got our Rotary Citation for 2019-2020. So I just wanted to Yay. share it with you guys and thank you all for your help during my presidential year. So I just thought it would be nice to share. Now I will give you back your host and you can share your photo. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I come up with. I'm always impressed how smoothly we have a transition of power here. <laughs> <laughs> Peaceful All right, too. Can you, yeah. Can you see that? Oh yes. Right, good. Okay. So there is the group, all 17 of them, and all the grabbers, the great garbage grabbers that Sherry donated funds for. So that's wonderful. And, and if you look closely, you'll see the shadow of Lynn Grohl, who took that picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going back to the real life now. All right, um, I will uh, please welcome Sue Jones, who will introduce our speaker. Oh, Sue. Wait, you're muted, Sue. There you go. I ask Eddie Sunquist, Vince, and Jason to please send me uh, copies of their comments so that I can include them in this week's newsletter. And then I will quickly start, and I apologize to PJ Wendell. I have taken his wonderful bio, and I'm going to shorten it down a bit, but I will include the entire bio in our newsletter uh, just for time so that we have uh, more time for questions from PJ. PJ Wendell, the interim county, uh, Chautauqua County Executive, was born in Kingston, Pennsylvania in 1970. He attended Southwestern Central School, and boy, did he ever exceed in wrestling and track, where he was a four-year varsity letter winner and a three-year varsity letter winner in football. And then he went to Brockport, where he majored in physical education. Hello. <laughs> he was a four-year varsity letter winner in wrestling for all of the years that he was at uh, Brockport, two-time NCAA qualifier and eventual All-American his senior year. He captained that team uh, that finished with the fifth NCAA Division III National Championship, and he finally graduated with a bachelor's of science degree, I don't know how, with all of his sports activities. 
While he went to Brockport, he joined the Lakewood Volunteer Fire Department, where he continues to serve the village after 31 years. He has participated in every single office of the firefighters, and he is also an EMT. Um, in 2019, he was elected, selected EMS Provider of the Year, and he was inducted into the Brockport Athletic Hall of Fame that year as well. He came back to Chautauqua County, which is our gain, and he began to substitute at local schools. Eventually, he was hired at Faulkner Central School as boys physical education teacher, where he's worked for the past 19 years. He received a master's of sports study with a concentration in exercise science from the United States Sports Academy in Daphne, Alabama. He also received a master's of education from Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania, graduating summa cum laude in educational leadership. And then, as if he wasn't busy enough, he was elected as a trustee for the village of Lakewood in 2007. He served the village for five years while serving his final two years as deputy mayor. And then in 2011, he ran for county legislature in what was then District 18. He was sworn in in 2012. During his eight years, he served on the Administrative Services Committee Audit and Control Committee, and was a four-year chairman of the Public Safety Committee. He was selected as Assistant Majority Leader in 2014, and then moving into Majority Leader in 2016. He was unanimously elected as Chairman of the Legislature in 2018, and again in 2019. <clears throat> On January 3rd, 2020, he became the first Chautauqua County Executive to be appointed by the county legislature when he was elected to fill part of the remaining term of the former county executive. He was also appointed to the Federal Communications Committee, advisor, excuse me, Federal Communications Commission Advisory Committee in 2020. He is one of only three county officials nationwide to be selected to serve on this committee and he's the only representative from New York State. He's been an active member of the Chautauqua County Republican Party since 2007 and a plethora of committees and services there. He lives in Lakewood with his wife of 18 years, Jennifer, and their two children, Sydney, a former Rotary Exchange student to Prague Czech, in the Czech Republic and Bowdoin, 13, an eighth grader at Southwestern. PJ, you have the floor. Susan, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for having this opportunity. Uh, I feel really honored today because, uh, you know, as you get sworn into anything, it's great to have people there, you know, but um, in small part, maybe part of that extended family that Melissa Myers has spoken with. I've known Melissa since she entered the Myers family many years ago and, uh, Again, I've been privy to be a part of that extended family for many years. So congratulations, Melissa, on your induction to the Rotary. I can't say enough, uh, as Sue said, my daughter, Sydney, uh, was sponsored by the Noon Rotary and had a tremendous experience uh, in Prague, Czech Republic. Sadly enough, uh, as most things happened last year, it was cut short due to the COVID crisis. Uh, but, you know, I, I learned and, and really became very close with many people on this, uh, this, this club uh, through that, especially Sherry and her husband, but just can't say enough about Rotary and, and the experiences she's had uh, and just so proud of what she's accomplished uh, through, you know, Rotary and especially the Rotary here of Jamestown. Now, many of you I've known for a long time, some dating back to when I first moved here in 1977, some of you as friends and colleagues having served uh, on the legislature or served with you, and some of you even dating myself now having my 50th birthday over the weekend as former teachers of certain members of this uh, club, <laughs> their story. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats and um, I appreciate uh, the introduction. You know, a little bit about myself, as, as Susan said, I moved here uh, 1977 as a, I guess as a product of economic development in Chautauqua County. My dad was with Mack Truck. We moved here with Cummins Engine in 1977. It'll be 43 years uh, this, at the end of this month 
Uh, for those of you who are longtime residents of Chautauqua County and especially Jamestown area or Celeron, uh, my first night in town was the night that Evan Skate land at the former Celeron amusement park burned. So hopefully I didn't bring any bad uh, mojo to Chautauqua County, but uh, again, a unique experience uh, moving into the area and unfortunately hearing sirens wailing and uh, it was an interesting evening. But uh, my time since then has been anything less than incredible, remarkable. The people I've met and the experiences I've had here in Chautauqua County are phenomenal. Uh, you know, at one point somebody asked me years ago that, you know, would you be interested in getting involved in government? And I was, you know, kind of wondering that, should I, should I not, and why not? And I've always kind of believed, if not who, why not me, and when, why not now? So Mary Tony Caprino re, uh, reached out to me and had said, we don't have anybody in the fire department in the village trustees. So would you consider running? And I did. And what an incredible time it was. Uh, I've been involved with public safety the majority of my life, 32 years. Uh, I must admit that uh, as, as a 50 year old, uh, station to show emergency is what spawned my career in the fire service. Uh, Johnny Gage and Roy DeSoto uh, kind of left an indelible mark uh, but those 32 years now with the fire department has left so many experiences and, and obviously some of the things we see are, are life altering, but at the same time, so many good things and so many phenomenal things uh, that have happened. And it's through that that I've really extended myself uh, of service. You know, I've been in Falconer Central Schools for 20 years. And when the opportunity came about to step into the leadership role as county executive, it was with great deliberation. I sat down with my wife. Uh, and made a decision that after 20 years of teaching, I could have remained another 10 years and had a phenomenal career. And as I was moving into the educational leadership, the last three years uh, when I was at uh, Falconer was a working assistant principal, if you will, at Temple Elementary School. So I uh, was looking to move into that career path, but you know, wanted to wait for the right opportunity. Well, this came along and, and after a long discussion with my wife, uh, we decided to move forward. I was uh, nominated by the Republican committee and then the name presented to the legislature where it was unanimously approved. So uh, uniquely, I was the very first appointed county executive here in Chautauqua County. But having said that, I look at the term appointed as much like we look at the appointing of Supreme Court justices. Somebody who is qualified, somebody who has the experience and somebody who those in positions of power feel are the right person to lead us. And that's the position that I took and supported by the county legislature. It's incredible to sit on a meeting like this and if having 10 county executives in Chautauqua County, two of them are seated here and ironically right above me in the Brady Bunch screen uh, as we see. So uh, I have big shoes to fill in following Andy and Vince, uh, but I take that with a great sense of pride and respect as I move forward. So as you know, March 15th was a day of infamy. It was a Sunday and I remember the last budget public engagement speaking I had was at church when I, Father Mendy had spoken about this and you know was kind of pondering and I asked if I could respond. And I did. And from that point on, things changed. We declared a state of emergency on that day and the rest was history, if you will. So we created the budget, or excuse me, a COVID response team, which led the charge, making sure that the health and wellness of all of our residents was taken into consideration. And after that, we also moved and formed the COVID-19 financial, excuse me, my COVID-19 financial team, where the budget was scrutinized. And at one point we did reduce the budget $4 million. We also volunteered, excuse me, offered a voluntary furlough. And it was a very tough decision because many counties at the time were looking at layoffs. And I did not want to lay off my staff because I knew how valiant they were, what a great job they provide for the county. But by offering the furlough, it allowed them to stay home and also remain on the health insurance and not severing our ties or laying them off and having to rehire everyone as we came back. So again, with that effort, we reduced our county budget at that point, $5.1 million. So some people have asked, well, you know, county executive, you look at the criticisms or the articles in the paper, how do we come up with the budget that we have right now? It's through those efforts, through that working together, the collaborations that I've had and continue to maintain and continue to grow and foster as county executive that led us to the position we are in right now with our county budget. And that county budget is very sustainable. And right now, as we're going through the uh, budget deliberations or hearings, as we refer to them here at the county, we're still looking at that budget and how we could, again, streamline it and make it more viable for our residents. Along with that budget, which was a, a, a source of 
concern as I entered in because we knew there were lean times and especially COVID made it leader. We now look to how do we develop Chautauqua County. So I looked in one of the ideas that I've had or the principles I believe were two. One is macroeconomic development and then microeconomic development. So macro being looking at a large business bringing in, as Vince can tell you, a Phoenix has moved in and I took a tour of that last week, a phenomenal facility. Uh, I definitely got my workout in that morning walking through a Phoenix. Uh, I don't think I crossed my same path twice. I should have left breadcrumbs if I wanted to get out. Uh, but what a phenomenal facility and what a great opportunity uh, for economic boom here in Chautauqua County, especially uh, in the northern part near the shores of Lake Erie. But the other piece is microeconomic development. So do we want to bring in one business with 500 or more employees? Of course. And that's our goal. The likes of Cummins and other industries that have been here or come here. But also looking at the microeconomic development, those small businesses of 100 people or less or 50 or less that are here in Chautauqua County, places like Rand Machine that have just done a tremendous turnaround in the economic um, viability for their business. But I foster all economic growth here in Chautauqua County. And I want to continue that working closely with our IDA, Rich Dixon, Mark Ice and his crew have done phenomenal jobs in creating economic growth here in the county. But you know, one of the things that is sometimes touted with that group is that, you know, the, the CCIDA doesn't bring about jobs. Well, they do bring about jobs, but more importantly, it's the jobs retained that's really important in their endeavor. They're constantly using outreach they're constantly reaching out to businesses, asking what they can do and how they can help. I think one of the most important factors is the federal government, the uh, excuse me, Economic Development Agency decided that Chautauqua County, their IDA, excuse me, the CCIDA was fitting of a $10.5 million loan, grant loan opportunity. The Altel, excuse me, Altec loans that they've had for nearly 40 years have proven fruits of their labor, but also now the EDA said, you know what? We respect what you do. We're responsible enough to get this money out. We're going to give you another ten and a half million dollars, the largest uh, amount of money given anybody in the Western New York region. So we continue to grow things here economically in Chautauqua County. Just got back from a trip over the weekend, uh, visiting some wineries, and have a great new opportunity to make some winery connections and grow our regional tourism that we have here in Chautauqua County. Uh, not too far from my office, maybe closer uh, than some of you have is our Chautauqua Lake and what a beautiful lake it is. But as you know, the cleanup and the concern and health of that lake has been here and we're gonna to continue to grow. A unity of effort is something that I've uh, considered and flown under as a flag or a banner and moving forward. Bringing everybody together as chairman of the legislature, we worked uh, tirelessly uh, for bipartisan effort and you saw, you saw that. And we continue to do that now with the legislature under the current leadership of Pierre Shagna but it's that constant bipartisan effort. One of the things I'm most proud of is when some people are introduced, uh, you know, once the, the president of Chautauqua Institution, Michael Hill, somebody asked him, well, what's, what's the county executive's political party? And he said, you know, that's really never come up. What he does is work for the good of Chautauqua County, look to advance the county and making sure that we're doing this in a manner that is equitable for everybody, but keeping in mind that the residents and taxpayers are his first and foremost concern. And that's what I continue to do. Uh, as I am here as your county executive. And after March 3rd, again, continuing on as county executive for the next year, knowing as I took this job as an appointee, I would have to run two continuous years. So this year is an election for a one year term and I come back next year for an election to a four year term. So I know I have my work cut out for me, but my dedication is to this community. My dedication is to the county. I take those various experiences I've had, whether it was working as an ER, technician, as an EMT, as a firefighter, as a teacher, as an educator, as an administrator, as a local government representative. I bring all that to the table, utilizing friendships and networks to bring the best for Chautauqua County. So it's a little bit about me. I try to keep it short. As some of you know, I can talk quite a while, uh, but I want to make sure we have time for questions. So again, I thank you for your time. I can't thank you enough. My daughter thanks you deeply. Uh, she would have tried to get on this meeting, but she decided uh, as a freshman online at Florida State until she leaves for Spain in January, uh, she decided to take her uh, herself on a little trip across the country. So she's visiting some friends uh, and, and enjoying herself as uh, I, one thing the Rotary has taught her is how to be self-sufficient. Uh, I can honestly say at 5'10", 240 pounds, whatever experience that I've had as an athlete, uh, Nothing more difficult than to put your child 
on a plane and watch them walk away. And, uh, you know, knowing they're in great hands, but knowing that, you know, what you've done uh, and seeing kind of the fruits of your labor. So um, I thank everybody here because you all were a huge part of that. Uh, and um, that's it for me. Uh, I'll give you uh, time for some questions. Yep. Anyone have a question? Uh, speak up if you have a question. Greg, well, are you trying uh, to talk? Oregon's got to have a, I have a comment uh, while people yeah. are thinking of their questions for PJ. Um, PJ, when uh, he was considering this position um, and, and after he was selected, said, you have any advice? And I said, yeah, I do. Uh, turn your cell phone off at nine o'clock at night and do not look at it so that you can get a, a good night's sleep. Because the next morning when you get up, you never know what's coming your way. It's a whole new day with a whole new challenges. And boy, uh, PJ sure got hit with that with the COVID. So um, I am in so many different plays, so pleased to see not only the bipartisan effort, which we are all so proud of and lucky to have in our county. Uh, you look at everything else going on in the world, we're moving forward. Yes, we have disagreements and other issues, but PJ is the guy that is able to accept alternative <laughs> ideas from both sides of the political spectrum, and uh, it benefits every one of us. So I'm a big fan. I got a sign in my yard, so that's that. <laughs> Greg? It's to you. Greg, so PJ, you PJ, do you have a, a, a plan just in case the budget ends up to be in worse shape than it is and the income is in much worse shape. So is there a contingency plan out there already developed? Uh, as far as the current budget or, or maybe at the end of next year's budget? Next year's budget. Next year's budget. Well, next year's budget, we are looking at that. You know, we're, we're, as the term we've used is cautiously optimistic. And, you know, I, I would tell you, I would not be putting forth the numbers that I have if I didn't have, um, you know, a lot of one conservative uh, position on that. But yes, there are contingencies. And one of the things we focused on was not using fund balance, which uh, many would say, if you call that a rainy day fund, we're in the midst of a hurricane right now. And, uh, you know, not using fund balance in this year's next year's budget is key. And so there are a couple of things out there, you know, we're looking at this budget without any sort of federal assistance, which uh, Congressman Tom Reed is doing a tremendous job uh, and as you know, there was uh, some form passed over the weekend, but Tom Reed has done an excellent job of getting the money directly to local municipalities. The mayor spoke about this, Mayor Sunquist, in today's paper. You know, so we do have a contingency plan, yes, Greg, uh, but right now um, we're looking at some, you know, really good numbers. And I, I just got back from the budget hearings earlier, and uh, I can tell you that uh, I, I still remain very optimistic as how this budget will come out uh, when, when it's finally uh, brought forth for passage uh, at the October meeting in the legislature. But we do have a plan, yes. I want to say Another real quick, that, I just want to say to touch on that, I, I did speak, if, if people weren't or hadn't seen, it really hasn't gotten a lot of publicity just yet. But our finance department received the national award from three plus one. I was fortunate enough to meet Joe Ralston over the weekend uh, in an event, and he represents a leader. and. I think, Mr. Lloyd, you're very familiar with uh, Joe and his business at Three Plus One. As the world gets smaller, um, he did employ John's uh, daughter, Jessica, uh, who I've known since she was very little. So uh, again, really a great opportunity. But Three Plus One, Chautauqua County received a national award based on four quarters of solid performance. And of those four quarters, you had to have a score of 90% or better. Three of those quarters, Chautauqua County was at a 96 one quarter they slipped to a 94. We had the highest rate in any county in anywhere in the United States. So hats off to our finance department. So when I produce this budget, it's in concert with them. So when you have nationally recognized leadership in finance, that that budget is very solid as we go forward. So hats off to Kitty Crow and Kathleen Dennison. Uh, that award was given to us and it's actually in our possession now here at the county, but they'll be receiving some more accolades at the state level and the National Association of Counties for what they've done. So 
I just want to give a shout out to them that they've, they've helped with this budget, but it's that financial planning that's really put us in a good spot uh, and, and able to produce the budget we did produce for the county. Wonderful. Any other questions? Uh, Joni, this is Andy. Uh, I always appreciate these Rotary meetings because I always learn something new. And uh, today I learned why Vince Horgan never answered my calls late at night. But uh, <laughs> I did want to point out, Vince, that uh, PJ has not followed your advice completely because he has answered some of my calls late at night. So uh, thanks, PJ, and keep up the great work. Thank you, Andy. All Always right, appreciate no. your comments, Andy. <laughs> All right. In the interest of time, I we so appreciate you being here, um, County Executive Wendell. We also um, are working to um, end polio in the world. That's rodeo. Ro rodeo. I said it. I did it. The uh, Rotary's big task. And we're doing very well, whereas they say we're this close. And we will make a donation in your honor to the Polio Plus Fund to inoculate a number of children. Thank you. So sir. thank you very much. It's quite an honor. Thank you. In two weeks, remember, we're not getting together next week. On October 19th, our speaker will be County Executive Candidate Rich Morriso. Did I say that right? Um, Rich Morriso. So remember, Rotary opens opportunities. What opportunities will you see in the community that you can bring to Rotary and we can help make it better? Have a great week, everybody. You're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.